the little master struggled his way back up. He had a palm print on his cheek with a red wound on his forehead. Dracon looked at Grandmaster Hank quietly, with a bit of sympathy on his face. The North Atlantic elders, standing behind Dracon, all had pity in their eyes as well. It was pathetic. Not only were 16 senior elders and the Crown Prince of South Atlantic held hostage by the North Atlantic Dragon Palace, but now Hank had just hit the only disciple of Thomas, one of the ancestors of the Dragon Tribe. Gritting his teeth, the little master didn't speak. He held his cheek and looked up at Grandmaster Hank with hatred. Grandmaster Hank was still angry. A little kid of North Atlantic dares to look at me this way? Do you really think you are invincible? Dracon cleared his throat. Elder Hank, the kid is not from our clan. Whoever he is, he deserved it for talking to me like that. Grandmaster Hank thought that it was worthless to talk about such trivial things. Instead, he pointed his finger at Dracon. I'll forgive your prince for hurting Henry, but today you must release Henry. Old man, I won't forget you. Rubbing his face, the little master said in a vicious tone. Seeing that the kid was still arrogant after the slap, Grandmaster Hank was enraged. He lifted his hand and wanted to send him flying with one palm. Elder Liam suddenly stepped up and blocked the strike. Grandmaster Hank's strength was so great that it forced Elder Liam to back off four steps. Your North Atlantic elders are so weak. Earning back some face, Grandmaster Hank withdrew his palm. Ignoring Hank's mocking words, Elder Liam bent over and leaned toward the little boy, asking gently, Little Master, are you hurt? Elder Liam had been with Dracon for many years as one of his most trusted assistants. Although his cultivation strength was not the greatest, his rank in the palace was very high. That was why Grandmaster Hank found his concern for this kid in the robe quite unsettling. I'm fine. The little boy waved his hand, his eyes staring at Grandmaster Hank hatefully. Abruptly, he turned and went inside the Dragon Palace. I forgot to introduce him to you. Seeing the weird look on Grandmaster Hank's face, Dracon took half a step forward. That little master was Noah the only disciple of Thomas who is temporarily living in North Atlantic Dragon Palace. Although they were at the bottom of the sea, Grandmaster Hank felt as if thunder exploded on his head. Who was Thomas? He was the oldest son of the legendary Godly Dragon. In the Nine Dragon Palace a few days ago, one roar by him had killed thousands of cultivators. Even the affluent Four Ocean Dragon Palaces wanted to host this ancient ancestor, and he had just slapped Thomas's last disciple to the ground? Grandmaster Hank shivered all over, wishing for a quick death. All the members of the Five Elemental Dragon Clans knew that among the nine ancestors, only Thomas was still traveling in the mortal world, and this ancestor's temper was peculiar. In the world of cultivation, the older the cultivators got, the more protective they were. If Thomas vented his anger out on South Atlantic, the result would be disastrous. Looking at the furious little master, Grandmaster Hank was stunned into speechlessness. I'm busy. If you have nothing to say, I'll send your crown prince back to you in three days when his injuries somewhat recover. With that, Dracon didn't wait for Grandmaster Hank's answer and went back inside. The elders followed him while the soldiers guarding the gate stood before the entrance. With 16 senior elders and the crown prince of South Atlantic under his control, Dracon had the upper hand. 
he didn't even allow the aggressive Grandmaster Hank inside the door. The old man almost lost his temper, but he knew it would get him nothing. He had demanded that the North Atlantic hand over Jacob in three days, or he would run wild in the North Atlantic's Dragon Palace with 16 high-level elders. But now, North Atlantic turned the table and gave him an ultimatum of three days. If the South Atlantic behaved well, North Atlantic would release Henry intact in three days. With his lifeline in the hands of North Atlantic, Hank had no choice but to give in. He had ordered the elders to protect Henry and didn't understand how such a powerful team, which consisted of six 8th level cultivators and ten 7th level cultivators, had been captured by the North Atlantic. Dracon was also puzzled about the same question. He had been sitting in the North Atlantic Dragon Palace, discussing with the elders how to handle the emergency when 16 elders and Henry dropped into the sea around the Dragon Palace. The patrolling soldiers easily captured them. He thought hard and concluded that it was the Grandmaster of the Soul Formation Realm in the territory who made an exception and sent the North Atlantic this big present, solving the crisis for them. He would never imagine that it was, in fact, a gift from his son-in-law. Meanwhile, regardless of the contribution he had made, Jacob was massaging his grandma's feet in her room. At her age, grandma easily got sore feet. Jacob massaged the acupoints and muscles on her legs while chatting with her. Jacob, kind-heartedness is your biggest virtue. Laying on the bed, Grandma looked at him with a smile and said in satisfaction, Grandma, you work so hard, and it's my duty to give you a massage. He continued working on her sore muscles. I think Jade and Julia are very nice girls. With her eyes closed, Grandma said abruptly, Of course they are. Otherwise, you wouldn't have invited them to stay the night here. Jacob said. They live with their grandfather downtown, but he is busy and is not always home. They have no other relatives in the city, and I regard them as my own children, Grandma said. That's nice. Jacob could do nothing but smile at her. And how is Soph doing lately? Grandma continued to ask. She's fine. She has been working hard on her studies these days. Oh, I will go shopping with her tomorrow, Jacob reported, gently massaging her shoulders. Good. Soph is still an innocent girl, so you have to take care of her. I have the company of Jade and Julia, so you don't have to worry about me. Okay. And how is Kathy lately? Grandma asked again. Exhaling lightly, Jacob wondered if Grandma was doing a roll call. But he couldn't voice his thoughts. Instead, he answered immediately, She's fine too. She had meant to visit you this weekend, but she's quite busy and I don't know her exact schedule. Well, Kathy is a good girl as well, Grandma said meaningfully. She continued, after a pause, Thinking about it, Kathy's situation is quite pitiable being left alone here while her parents are both out of the country. Jacob nodded his agreement. With Kyle gone to London a couple of days before, she must be even more alone, living with her aunt and uncle, who ran some small businesses. You should invite Kathy to our home on the weekends. She is like family anyway. Grandma looked back at Jacob. Look at Jade and Julia. They are easy going and warmed up to me so quickly. Jade and Julia have made it their goal to serve me. Of course they have warmed up to you quickly, Jacob thought to himself. However, he agreed with Grandma's sentiments. Kathy was indeed lonely. She had even canceled her plan of moving away for her parents. Okay, okay, 
You've been massaging me for more than half an hour now. My entire body feels relaxed. I'm ready for bed, and you go back to your room and rest as well. Removing Jacob's hands from her feet, Grandma said gently, Okay, have a good night, Grandma. Jacob backed out of the room. Jacob was getting ready for bed while thinking about his plans for the next day. He was going to be spending the whole day with Sophie, which was something he felt as if they hadn't done in ages, so he was a little excited about it. Suddenly, Jade and Julia appeared before him in their pajamas. Master, we forgot something important. Jade walked over and held up his right hand. It's been a while since we last measured your five elements. Julia walked lightly to the other side and held up his left hand. Metal, 21. Wood, 18. Water, 22. Fire, 19. Earth, 20. After a moment, Jade reported the numbers. Master, the five elements in your body are almost balanced, Julia said in a low voice. Jacob nodded. Only he knew the hard effort he put in to gain the balance of the five elements. Of course, without the sister's tips, he would never have achieved it. With the five elements in his body moving toward equilibrium each day, he found it was easier and smoother for him to circulate the Sword Shadow Scroll. Especially after he reached the third level, which was equivalent to the core formation realm, he could control the sword energies at will, and could even form sword array formations. The power of the Sword Shadow Scroll was beginning to show. It was indeed hard to cultivate the Sword Shadow Scroll, but with Jade and Julia helping him with the balance of the five elements, his progress was quite good. Jade, Julia, if you are not going to sleep as of now, please do me a favor. Jacob withdrew his hands and looked at them. What favor? They blinked and looked at him. Guard me while I try the lightning cultivation, Jacob said 